not only make it, we can enjoy our lives. Right. <laughs> it's not a struggle, it's not a survival. We don't have to survive unless we want to focus our energy into that kind of energy. So yes, totally, to answer your question. Yes, you are supported even when your bank account does seem to fail you. Even that's not a failure. Even that's still an invitation. So you may not get what you want, but you will get something? <laughs> you always get what you want. Now, you may not always get what you resonate with, but that's still what you want to experience so that you can know that that does not resonate so, and make a choice and be challenged and invite yourself to a greater enrichment, greater self-awareness, greater freedom, greater freedom from negative or limiting beliefs. You'll get what you want, but you may not know what you want. Like you may think that you want the trip to Hawaii or whatever, you might not get that, but maybe your higher self, that wasn't what you actually wanted anyway. Exactly. Hawaii may be just a representation of a particular frequency of energy you wish to experience in yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you think of Hawaii or whatever you desire, what kind of energy does it bring about? When you picture the white sandy beach and like laying in the sun and like not having anything to do unless you want to do it, drinking cocktails every evening or not, if you don't like cocktails, I would drink them. Living the good life. Yeah. How does that make you feel? What do you feel? What does it trigger within your heart consciousness, within your frequency, within your vibrational field? What does it trigger? That's what it's about. It's about the state. It's about the energy that you embody right here, right now. It's not about the pictures that your mind associates with that energy. We used to picture the symbols like Hawaii or a good job or a good life. We use these or a lot of money in our bank account. We use these images to trigger a feeling, a state, a frequency. Then we can simply dance on that energy without having to worry or be insistent upon the image. And then naturally, the less insistent we are, yet very confident, clear, and have that no-nonsense policy. But the no-nonsense policy is toward our own limiting ideas. It's not an insistence upon a particular image like, this is exactly the way it needs to unfold. Remember, let go of the hows, the whens, the whys. And relax. And be that frequency that the image of a Hawaii may trigger in you. And simply enjoy it, knowing that you already have that energy right now. Clearly. All you have to do is think of Hawaii and you feel as if you're there. What you want is the feeling. You couldn't care less about the sand, the sun, etc. You want the feeling. We just use these symbols to trigger those feelings, to trigger that state of self-awareness. And so to come back to your question, we always get what we want and it's not always what we think it is. Now that does not mean that when we're in a situation that we really don't resonate with, that that's secretly what we ultimately desire to be in. It's simply that as a temporary state, that's what we want to, to challenge ourselves with. That's what we want as a test. Because what does the test give you if you approach it with this heightened creativity and no-nonsense policy and confidence and cl clarity? When you approach a challenge, when you approach day two with clarity, with knowing who it is you are, vibrationally speaking. What it does, why you want that challenge, why you want that test, is because that test is the manifestation outwardly of the beliefs that you don't really see you're having. The limiting beliefs that shape your life. Beliefs create experiences. Beliefs shape reality. And so what better way to get familiar with those beliefs than to project it outward as a challenge that seems to stand in between you and your absolute desire. It's just a game we play within our own consciousness. But we do that so that we can find greater enrichment, greater self-awareness, greater expansion greater bliss through approaching that with creativity, with joy, with confidence, with fearlessness. So would we deal with these obstacles in the same way that we would deal with the thought, apply the no-nonsense policy and just kind of regard the obstacle of the physical, whatever it is that's in our day and just simply maybe ignore it's the wrong word, but not let it mean anything. Yeah. Allow that energy to work itself out within your space. Hold the space for that emotional energy 
for that sense of failure or hope or success or that game we play with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Allow those energies to be there, but know that it's not you. So it's the inclusiveness of it and at the same time, the exclusiveness of it. It's all inclusive. You allow everything to be as it is. And yet you make this clear choice. You're cutting the cake. You're accepting the whole cake, but still you're going to cut the cake. You don't want the whole cake. You just want a slice. What slice of reality do you want to experience? Doesn't mean you don't respect the whole cake of options. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so it, in, in essence, it would get no more or less um, special treatment than a thought would. Is, is that, if I'm understanding you right, is that ultimately right? yes? Okay, it's the same thing. Yes, but look at the belief. Spot the belief. Mm -hmm. Don't just ignore it out of a walking away from it, but see it until you can feel its energy. It's cleared out. There's no charge anymore, and you really see no value or truth in that belief for you anymore. Except the lesson that it's offering you. Exactly. But once you see, it has nothing to offer you anymore. Once you've exhausted that mm -hmm. unselfworthiness belief, because that's usually what it is, belief in I'm not worthy, I'm not capable, this is not possible, I don't deserve this, etc. So when the belief that is some form of that fear belief, once it's exhausted, meaning once you've induced enough clarity about yourself to know that this is not what's true about you, that you are worthy, that you are bliss, that you are made in the image of ecstasy, that you are ever present, that you are inseparable from that existence which we tuned into in the beginning meditation. And that that existence clearly wants you to be here, otherwise you wouldn't. Because all there is is intelligence. There is no random event. You are not a random event. You are meant to be here. So if you start to see that, if you start to experience that about yourself, how long can these beliefs really seem true? And when a belief doesn't seem true, it really doesn't affect you. That's when you've exhausted the belief and your life will change. That belief will no longer shape your life. Unless there's still a little bit of belief in it, in which case you will give yourself the experience of confirmation and yes, and success. And then right after you'll give yourself the experience of failure in some way, shape or form or the threat of failure. Oh shit, this might not last. That idea, it might not last. Good things never last is Yes, it's true because we've believed in it collectively and individually. It doesn't have to be true. Good things can always last. They can always transform into even greater goodness. It all depends on your beliefs. So if you give yourself that sort of, oh, okay, I was too excited. I was too childlike. Darn, I desire too much. Let me go back to my depressive state and call that spirituality. <laughs> Let me go back to being a zombie, yes. That's when you're not making it to day three in that particular challenge. You see, day one, two, three is always going on in different beliefs. You may be at day three with one belief and at day one with another belief and at day two with another, all in the same day. This is not complicated. It's just as a way to get more clarity. It's helpful to understand that. That you may be very successful in achieving day three in one belief and you may sort of give in and day three of that belief may actually support you in creating more of a challenge in day two of another belief. The success of one desire may somehow lead to the fear of it not lasting, which shows you a different belief. Does that make sense? Which is day two of another belief. So then clearly restate energetically what your intention is. Your intention is in some way, shape or form to be free of limiting beliefs more and more to expand into more of your authenticity, of your bliss, of your, sorry, of your worth, of your freedom. And so that's the mission. That's the intention in some way, shape or form. And so any doubt that comes your way, whether as an internal doubt that's spotted or whether as a manifestation out there, which appears to be a roadblock or a dwindling bank account or something else, very, very tangible, because that's how we like to create things here. That's how we like to challenge ourselves to the fullest. That's why this is such a rich experience. This physical experience, such a rich experience because it's so dense in its learning. It's so dense in its challenges, but it's so great in its day three celebration. 
It's such a day-night contrast. It's not available in other states or dimensions of consciousness. So play with that. Play with the polarities. Include them. Feel like you can actually play with them. They're not there to harm you. They're not there to ultimately deprive you of the, your desires. You're only using this template, this experience, to project your fears, your doubts, to get to know yourself so that you can become a being of bliss. So the intention is benevolent at all times, even when your bank account dwindles, even when things don't seem to work out. That's an opportunity for relaxation and inquiry. What am I believing is true about myself in order for me to manifest this, in order for me to attract this challenge or see it in the way that I'm seeing it? And even changing the word obstacle for challenge is already an improvement. Changing the word challenge for invitation or changing the word invitation for celebration to see day two already as a celebration of your success. That decreases, decreases, decreases the amount of time you spend in day two. The more holistic and positive your definition is of day two, the more you look forward to challenging yourself, the smoother, the more enjoyable, the more ecstatic the ride will be.